Okay, so this is the homework that I give out in day two for permutations. This is going to take a little longer than day one, and hopefully I don't mess any of them up. As you might have noticed on day one, uh, what was that? 4D? That actually should have been 2 times 5 times 5 because I didn't read the question right. Repetition was allowed on that one, and I read it as repetition wasn't allowed, or I didn't read it. Um, so this is the, one of the major problems with data management, is you've got to take the time to read the question properly. So uh, yeah, hopefully I can do that while still rushing through this whole thing. All right, pause the video and do the questions. And then, let's go. Okay, so, question three. A publisher evaluates eight math textbooks by sending them to a number of teachers and asking them to name their five, their five favorite books in order. Now, in order matters here. N's equal to eight. K is equal to five. One, two, three, four, five. So if it was just the five textbooks and they weren't actually ranked in order, then that would be a comms question, and well, we'll get to that later. So, how many spots could be in the first place? Well, eight different textbooks could. And But then once you put one of them down there, remember this bag, so I've got a bag full of eight books. Once I put one of them down there, there's only seven that could go there. And then six, five, four. So hopefully if you followed yesterday's, today should be a little bit easier. 8P5. Well, until we get to the hard questions at the end. Four. 49 competitors in a cross-country race. In how many ways can the first three prizes be awarded? No ties are allowed. That's good. N's equal to 49. K's equal to 3 this time. So 1, 2, 3. Now remember, place matters. So this is first place. 49 people could come first. But once somebody comes in, there's really only 48. You can't have repetition of the same kid unless they clone themselves. Sometimes I just shouldn't say things like that, but I can't help it. Uh, 49, why do I keep doing a big nine? I guess because I'm looking at doing a big P. So 49 P, did I just say that out loud? Three. Yeah, so I guess normally I do four and then big P, so this time, anyways, I gotta have a big P apparently. Um, three, four, five. There are 56 possible entrants to a car race. Only 32 cars are allowed in the race, with the 32 positions decided in order by the fastest times, blah, blah, blah. How many starting orders could the race have? Well, I am not going to ch 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 do all the seats of this one. N's equal to 56, and K is going to be equal to 32. So there's 32 seats. 56 could possibly go in there. So this one is going to be 56 P 32. That look good? Yeah. Six. In how many ways can 25 students be seated in a classroom with 25 desks? Well, again, n's equal to 25. Now, the k value is equal to the n value here. So this is a full permutation. So 25, so if I did do, 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 do all those seats, which I don't want to, but I'll start at 25, and then it'll go to 24, and then it will count all the way down to 1, which is 25 factorial. You could write it as 25p25, but, well, that's ugly. Write it as 25 factorial. OK. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In how many ways can six people seat themselves in a room with nine chairs where at most one person can sit in each chair? OK, so it seems like there are six people and there are nine seats. But try punching that in. Try punching in 6p9. It ain't going to work. You can't seat the six people in nine different places. You can't have more seats than you can have things. So we actually have to switch the order of this thing. Let's take the chairs and give them to people instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the nine seats and we are going to arrange them with the six people. Yeah. So you are going to get well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, starting at 9, 8, 7, 6, nice 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, so that is 9P, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, probably didn't need to do seats for that, um, but yeah, the trick here is that your N has to be bigger than your K, so we're going to have to give the seats to the people, not the people to the seats. 
how many primes of the letters A, B, C, D, and E have A in the first position? Okay, N is equal to five, A, B, C, D, E. K is equal to, it says permutations of them, so that must be looking for a full perm. A in the first position, one, two, three, four, five, so A is gonna be there, there is one A, then you go back to the bag, and there are four, three, two, one, so four factorial. B, A in the fourth position, one, two, three, four, five, so I'm gonna put the A down there, so there's one A, then you go back to the beginning, and four, three, two, one, so you fill in the seats counting down, just like normally. So the A in the first position is the same probability, sorry, not probability, the same number of permutations as A in the fourth position. Ooh, adjacent, okay, good. I love adjacent questions. One, two, three, four, five. Now D and E adjacent, so I'm gonna join their seats. I'm gonna put the D and E down there. Now after I drop the D and the E, I'm gonna go back to the bag and put these ones down. Three, two, one. And then I'm going to figure out how many places these could be in. So that could be in one, two, three, four places. Now, when I'm pointing with my finger there, I'm looking at the double space. So this, these two spaces could be there or there or there or there. So that's the four places. And then I times it by two for the switch. So remember, this number is places. This number is for the switch because it doesn't have to be DE. If they're adjacent, it could be DE or ED. So then I get four factorial times two. Cool, that's E. No, that's not E, that was eight C. Uh, let's go to nine. Nine, how many permutations of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, taken four at a time, so N's equal to six, the number's one to six, K is equal to four this time, this is not a full perm. A, do not contain six. Okay, one, two, three, four, so this is a new one, does not contain something. Now, what I do when it does not contain is I just take it out of the bag. So remember the bag with foam numbers we had in it? So it doesn't contain the six, so I can't put down a six anywhere, so I'm just gonna take the six and I'm gonna remove it from the bag entirely. So what does that do? It means that we start here with five, four, three, two. So we count down from five, so this is gonna be five, P, four. Not include. I think this is the first time I've had that. So when you have, you can't include it anywhere, just take it out of the bag. B, has the one in the first position. One, two, three, four, we've done this a bunch. So the one is going in there. So there is one, one, and then you go back to the bag and get five, four, three, so this is five, P, three. C, one in the third position. I don't even really need to do this by now. I hope you see that this is gonna be the same. So you put it in the third position, go back, lay down the rest of the numbers, and you get five, P, three. And D, three in the second and five in the third. One, two, three, four. So three is in the second position, five is in the third position. There is one three that I'll put down, then I'll put down one five. So these have to be there. So then when I go back to the bag, I could rearrange any of the other. How many were in the bag again? Six, I've taken two of them out, so it's four and then three. So this is four P two, also known as 12. Uh, yeah, that's nine. Okay, should have some room over here to do 10 then. How many permutations of the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six? N's equal to six, how many perms of the numbers? So it looks like I'm taking all of them. K is equal to six. So there's six seats, begin with an even number. Okay, this looks like a tougher question. One, two, three, four, five, six seats. They have to begin with an even number. So how many even numbers in one, two, three, four, five, six? Three of them. So it could be any of those three numbers. Now, again, remember, it, it, this isn't representing the number three. Well, hopefully not, because that's not even even. But this is representing any of the three numbers, the two, four, or the six. Now, I'm only gonna put one of them down, though. I can't put all three of them down at once. So one of them is going down, and then after one of them goes down, what do you got in the bag? Five, four, three, two, one. So this is gonna be three times five P, no. I could do five P five, but that's ugly. This is gonna be three times five factorial, because it counts all the way down. B, 
begins with an odd number and ends with an even. One, two, three, four, five, six. Begins with an odd, so how many odds we got? One, three, and five, so there's three odds. Then you end it with an even. Do all the restrictions before you start dropping those randoms. So ends with an even, so there are three of those. And then go do the random, so now in the bag there are four, three, two, one, so this is going to be four factorial times, you could say times three times three, but I'm just going to say times nine. Next one, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, this one's a little bit cooler. So it begins and ends with an odd number. So there's an odd number there and an odd number there. Now I don't care which one you start at, let's go to this restriction. When I reach into that bag, there are three. But after I drop one in the beginning, when I reach into the bag for this restriction, there are only two odd numbers now. So this can't be three and three, because after I place this odd, this odd, there are only two odds to choose from. Changes it up a little bit. So it's different than beginning with odd, ending with even, when you end it and begin it with an odd. Um, yeah, so I've taken those two out of the bag. There were six in the bag, so now there is four, three, two, one. So I would call this four factorial times six. Cool? Getting harder. 11. How many perms of six boys and five girls are there so that boys are not adjacent to boys and girls are not adjacent to girls? Well, n is going to be equal to 11 here. Now, there's some specific rules here, so let's definitely drop some seats and have a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, now, we do not want these boys being adjacent to boys or girls being adjacent to girls. So we want to have the, them mixed up. So that means because there's more boys and less girls, it means that the boys are going to have to start here. So there's going to be a boy, and then there's going to be a girl, and then there's going to be a boy, and then there's going to be a girl, and then there's going to be a boy, and then a girl, and then a boy, and then a girl, and then a boy, and then a girl, and then a boy. So because there are six boys, so because b is equal to six and g is equal to five, why did I do that backwards? Um, we have to do start with boy, end with boy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is because they have to be in this spot, I'm just going to randomly select the boys. So there's six in the bag, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, and then go randomly select the girls. There are five, and then four, and then three, and then two, and then one. Now, can you see the factorial notation in here? I'm just going to skip everyone. So just look at the boys. Six, five, four, three, two, one is six factorial. That's not a factorial sign. Six factorial, but I will need this multiplication because now I'm going to multiply that by five, four, three, two, one of the girls, so five factorial. Hmm, neato. Okay, whoa, did I just say neato? Maybe I should edit that out. Nerdo. Um, so, 12. Um, how many permutations of five boys and five girls are there so that no boys are adjacent to boys and girls are adjacent to girls? Okay, so. This time, n's equal to 10. This question is a little bit trickier because boys are five and girls are five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Now this time, I don't have to start with boys. This could start with boys or girls. So this could be boy and then girl, and then boy and then girl, and then boy and then girl. So I would do five, four, three, two, one. And then I would do five, four, three, two, one. Or I could have started with the girl and then done the boy. So I would get, well, pretty much the exact same thing. Well, the numbers would look exact same anyways. So I could do it this way, or I could start it with girl and it would look exactly the same. So I times by two here. So the times by two is because I could either start with boy or with girl and they'll look identical. So I do this and then times it by two. One boy is one starting with girls. So you end up getting, well, you could say this is five factorial squared, but that would be weird. Um, let's just do 5 factorial times 5 factorial times 2. All right, 13. How many perms of the numbers? Hmm, you know what? I'm reaching my, uh, I'm reaching my YouTube maximum here, so if I'm going to put it up there, I've got to stop here. So uh, I'll do the next 13, 14, 15 on the next, page, on the next video. Breaking.